So why are we here? What is our goal? And what are we doing towards our goal? What, of, what kind of practice are we doing hmm? to reach the goal of freedom from Dukkha? Hmm? Dukkha is what most of us, you know, lead us here. Lead us here as lay people to come and practice or as monks. Hmm? Lead us to ordain and become monks in order to practice not in order to be monks. When we just sit still in this quiet environment and what we hear is the train of thoughts or a constant engine that is running around, <clears throat> constantly producing thoughts and memories Distracting us here, distracting us there. And the first thing that we have to do is to stop this train of thoughts. Hmm? Concentrate on our Buddha, concentrate on the breath, whatever you prefer. And to see the train of thoughts cutting down from 20 thoughts to 15 thoughts to 10 thoughts, to four thoughts, to two thoughts. The more our awareness increases, the easier it is to stop these thoughts. Then we see one thought, then we see half a thought, then we see a quarter of the thought, then we see the arising of the thought, and then we see the intention to think. The intention of to think is different from the thought itself. The thought will develop through our intention to think. And that's where we have to catch it. That, that amount of sati we have to have. Yeah? It is a prerequisite. It is not an option. Yeah? I, I always say, you know, samadhi is not an option. Yeah? The power of sati, the power of this awareness, knowing, knowing about our intentions, knowing the intention to move, knowing the intention to do anything, knowing the intention to think, knowing the intention to speak, and knowing what leads to this intention, what comes before this intention. That is the power of sati. Without the sati, we will not know. 
And without knowing, we still keep on turning on in this delusion that we are always in. The delusion that forms our world, the delusion that makes us this world that we live in. Yeah? But this world that we live in is not the reality. Yeah? The world that we live in is based, formed by our thoughts and by our memories. Memories about the past, huh? thoughts about the future. That's what we normally live in. Huh? We don't see the reality. The reality just is. Yeah? It changes every moment. Huh? And that's what we have to catch. Be in this one person moment, yeah? Be it the Buddha or be it the breath, knowing that the breath is going in, knowing that the breath is going out, not following the breath. Yeah? Keeping our attention, you know, underneath the nose, at the tip of the nose or wherever you can feel the breath. Yeah? That is the training of samadhi or keeping our attention on the Buddha or if it is too difficult, breathing in with Bud and breathing out with Do. Yeah? And whenever the mind goes off, that's where we put in our effort and that's where we need our determination to pull the mind back to the Buddha. No matter if it is easy, no matter if it is difficult. We have to pull it back, okay, back to the Buddha, back to the Buddha, that's where we stay. In order for us to foster our awareness, awareness of what is going on. If you sit still for a moment, you know what is going on. There are feelings, there is hearing, mm. there are thoughts and there are memories pop constantly popping up. Don't buy into the thoughts, let the thoughts pass by, you know, and go back to the Buddha. Mm. Don't, let, don't get distracted by the sounds, don't get distracted by your thoughts. Mm. Just pull the mind back to the Buddha until it sticks to the Buddha, until our awareness increases and then we catch yeah, just like I said in the beginning, we can catch these thoughts that are, you know, <clears throat> that are starting with 20 thoughts, a train of th 20 thoughts, you know, until it comes to one thought or half a thought or quarter of a thought or the beginning of the thought until we can see the intention. Mm -hmm. This is the minimum that we need if we really want to find any kind of relief, yeah? find any kind of relief from this world that we live in, from this world of imagination. Because, I mean, I don't know how to describe it different, differently. It is the world of imagination. We imagine uh, that there is this, we imagine that there is that, based on our experience of the past, based of our, of our memories. But it's not, the, it's not the present moment, it's not the reality. The reality just is. And it is very difficult to describe the reality yeah? because there is no labels for it to describe it. It just is. Yeah? And that's, where we, that's how we have to train our mind or how we have to train our chitta to just stick to this one point. Be it the Buddha, be it the breath. Yeah? Until this clarity arises, what is happening? What is happening within our heart? Yeah? And the more awareness, the more sati we develop, the more are we aware of our intentions. The intentions that form in the heart, the intentions to move, the intentions to scratch, the intentions to get up, the feelings that come into contact, the thoughts that come into contact, the memories that come into contact. I mean, it is, it is just like a very busy train station or nowadays a very busy airport, yeah? With constantly landing airplanes and taking off airplanes, yeah? And all the people rushing into this airplane or that airplane. It is very, very busy there in the heart. That's why we have to make it quiet, yeah? Not following it and see, you know, what is ever is happening, yeah? And then stick, yeah? and stick our attention to the Buddha or stick our attention to the breath so that we do not get swayed by whatever is happening in this air belt. <clears throat> but for that we need some determination. Yeah? For that we need, a, we need an engine. Yeah? 
And that is, that is something that is pretty much lacking within us. Eh? We come to a place that is so peaceful and it is so nice. I mean, we have a place to sleep, we have medicine to take care of the body, we have, we have something to close, you know, to keep the body warm, we have water to wash the body, yeah? and we have food to... And that's all what we need, yeah? And then we suddenly see it, feel satisfied and there is not this much dukkha that led us to this place. So we have to, to fire up the engine to see the dukkha in our life, you know, to go back, you know, when we were born. Yeah? How was it? Yeah? When we were one year old. Yeah? Go back from the day you are living now and go back one year. What happened this a year ago? Yeah? Or six months ago? Bring up this memory and see it and then go back another six months or another year. Until you come to the time of the birth. And then look. Where is all the sukha that you dream about? Where is all these pleasant trees that you constantly think this life is so pleasant? Think about the situations. Think about when you were in school. Think about when you were at university. Think about when you had a job to do. When you got up, yeah, had to work, yeah, and then came home, and were tired of tired from the work, and then you just wanted to eat something and go to sleep. Remember every detail. Don't get fooled by this selective memory, you know, try to, to memorize everything around the situation. And then go back, go back into the puberty, go back, when, go back to the school times, when we were in high school, when we were in primary school, when we learned how to, when we learned how to talk, yeah? when we learned how, how to walk, yeah? and when we just were born, yeah? just came out of this very narrow canal. And then go back, yeah? and then, then extend it into the future. Yeah? Take a look at your parents and your grandparents and see how they slowly age, how they slowly get old and then die. And what is left? When a person dies, what is left? It is the body. The chitta that is within the body, or that is captured in the body, or it is imprisoned in the body, whatever language you want to use, yeah? I mean, this goes, yeah? Just when the body dies, it goes off. It goes out. It probably goes into a new body, no, no matter what kind of body it is. Is it a human body? Is it an animal? animal body is a ghost body or is it a deva body or is it or is it in, in the hell yeah? and then comes back yeah? from whatever realm yeah I mean it is it appears there you know and it, and then it disappears and goes to another realm and then it disappears again disappears again and goes to another realm and there's no end to it yeah? do you really clearly understand that there's no end to this Samsara, if we don't put it to an end, if we don't put a halt to it, if we don't yeah, put a halt to the hamster wheel that we live in. Yeah. Whatever, whatever simile you want to take, whatever simile makes it clear to you the samsara, I mean, take this. Yeah. Look at it. Roller coaster, yeah, going up and going down. Yeah. Going up into the heavenly realm, you yeah. And we just a few minutes, you know, and most of the time we spend in other realms, yeah? Going down to the hell realm, yeah, and then going up a little bit to the ghost realm, then being on the human realm, and then going down again, you know, to the hell realm, yeah, until we finally go, go back up to the heavenly realm. Yeah? Is that what we want? The roller coaster of life? Yeah? Or is that what we want, you know, the hamster wheel? Yeah? When you look at the hamster wheel, look from the side, yeah, the hamster, yeah, I mean, really busy, 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 yeah, busy turning this wheel, just like us, yeah, we are busy turning this wheel with no end, yeah, with no meaning, hmm? we just run around thinking, yeah, I mean, that's nice, and that's how we fool ourselves. We have, to, we have to encounter, you know, we have to encounter, at least for the human life, we have to encounter birth and death. Huh? And both are very painful. 
Birth is very painful, we nearly die, and death is so painful that we die. Think about the process of aging. Think about, you know, when, when, when this body, you know, just like an old car breaks down. This needs to be fixed, that needs to be fixed, that and that and this and that, and in the end, you know, it just gives up. Yeah? <clears throat> with a car, we put it to the scrapyard, with a body, you know, we just sleep. Yeah? In both cases, we, we, we get out of the car, you know, put it to the scrapyard, we get out of the body and go into a new life. When do you want to stop? Huh? That is the question you should ask yourself. When do I want to get out of this roller coaster? Yeah? Going up and going down. Yeah? And if you remember the roller coaster, I mean, if you ever right, <clears throat> have been in one, yeah? there's no beginning and there's no end. And that is with samsara. There's no beginning. You're going up and you're going down. Yeah? And then going up a little bit and then going down again. And then going up a little bit and going down again. Yeah? Until it starts from a new going up. Yeah? And so on and so on. And no end to it. Yeah? If you don't decide to make an end to it. Yeah? And that is what you have to do. You have to find your own motivation. Yeah? I mean, you can use any, any of these things. Yeah? You can use any of these characteristics. There are three characteristics that are <clears throat> that are valid for all this universe, you know. It's anicca and natta dukkha. Yeah? Anicca means all these things are impermanent. You eat something that tastes nice, you know, and instantly this taste is gone, so you have to eat it again, and you eat it again, and you eat it again. Yeah? There's no end to it because the, the feeling always disappears. The nice feeling always disappears, yeah. The pleasant feeling disappears, the unpleasant feeling disappears. All these things, there is nothing lasting. Yeah? You can take this principle of anicca, or you can take, take the changing nature of anicca, or you can take the, the principle of anatta, that whatever you experience, whatever you see, whatever you hear is not you. It doesn't make sense, you know. I mean, we are we caught up in a movie, yeah? Just like you watch a movie, you know, that is interesting, you know, you're caught up in the movie and forget that there's somebody sitting there, yeah, who watches the movie. Or be it a video game, yeah? You actually play this video game and you are immersed in this video game. I mean, your hands and your hands and your feet and your head and everything is acting hmm? according to this limited game, hmm? to this limited choice that you have in this video game. Just like in life, we have a limited choice. Yeah? Our life can be described as a multiple choice. Yeah? You can choose this or you can choose that. Yeah? But you don't have, yeah? or you do have, but you don't see the opportunity that you have also free choice. Most of us, you know, just you know, use the choices that I had, you know, and that 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 our kilesas tell us, yeah, uh, that is the pleasant choice, that is the right choice, yeah. I mean, let's see, yeah. And how often have you gone in the dark, yeah? How often did we follow the choices that the kilesas gave us and were dissatisfactory, yeah? But we never, we never account, we, we never do accounting, we never check out, you know, what the kilesas promise us and what the results are that we get from the actions that we do. They promise us if you do this, you know, then you will be happy, yeah? And we do this and we are still unhappy. Then we do that and we are still unhappy. And they are also unhappy, yeah? Wow.
Looks like the Kalesas don't want to hear that, you know, that there is no satisfaction in this world. There is only dissatisfaction. Yeah? But we don't see it, yeah, because we, they constantly promise us, you know, if you do this, you know, you will be satisfied. If you do that, then you will be satisfied. Or if you do that, you know, you will be happy. Yeah? But most of the time, or, or 99% of the times, it is not true. Yeah? But we never check it out. Yeah? If, we, if we would be, yeah, if we would have a little bit of sati in our life, we would easily see it, you know, that we are constantly deceived by these promises, you know, that the kilesas give us. Yeah? If you do this, you become happy. Okay, I do this, you know. And now, you know, after I've done it, how do I feel? Just the same as shitty as before. Yeah? So, they lie to us. Yeah? And then we check it out the next time, and then, then we see they lie to us again. Yeah? And they constantly lie to us because they don't really know what makes us happy. Yeah? <clears throat> or as long, or they don't know if they, if they only would disappear for a moment, it would make us happy. Yeah? And that's what, what we do when we train samadhi. When we train samadhi, we reduce the thoughts until the thoughts disappear. And then we, then we are instantly happy. Yeah? We are instantly contented. We have no wish whatsoever. Yeah? And then we see all these wishes, all these desires make us unhappy. Yeah? We need this, we need that. Yeah? But when we are in samadhi, when there is no thoughts and when there are no memories, when there is just this, this peacefulness or the stillness, yeah? I mean there is no desire, there is no wish. You're just contented by itself. Yeah? And that only happens, you know, when we put the kilesas, you know, aside. Yeah? When we go and lock them out of the room, yeah? that we call samadhi, opachara samadhi. We are in the safe house. Yeah? The kilesas cannot enter. Yeah? They try to undermine it and sooner or later we will get out. Yeah? But while we are in the safe house, we are contented. And that is the only time when we are really contented. Yeah? So we actually know that whatever the kilesas promise us, if you do this or if you do that, if you do it this way or if you do it that way, then you will be successful. It's all deception. Yeah. We would know it, you know, once we go into the safe house, we would know. The only thing that we need is getting rid of the kilesas, yeah? <clears throat> closing them out, yeah? not allowing them in, in into our chitta. Yeah? That would make us happy. That would make us content. That would make us without desires. Yeah? And without desires, we are contented. Yeah? We don't wish for anything else. Yeah? No matter if it is hot or if it is cold. You know, we don't have any wish that it would be otherwise. Yeah? And that's actually, you know, the only time when we really experience you know, what is there. Yeah? Reality. Yeah? But we don't like to live in reality. We like to live in our imaginations. Yeah? Constantly painting these pictures. And all what we need to do is, you know, just, just stick to our Buddha or just stick to the breath until, you know, there are no more thoughts, yeah? That's all. And then we are happy and contented. So what is it, you know, I mean, after all these years, what is it that still prevents you from getting happy and contented? Yeah? And developing all the while, and developing all the while, you know, sati, this powerfulness, awareness, who knows whatever goes on into the heart, in the heart. Yeah? Sati knows what is going on. Sati knows if there is a <clears throat> sense contact. Sati knows what kind of sense contact it is, yeah? And then you can decide if you're interested or not. Yeah? If you say not interested, you know, then you, you, then you just stick to the Buddha or to the breath, yeah? And then all these sense, of, sense contacts, you know, I mean, are meaningless. Yeah? They pass away. Yeah? Just, like, just like you ride with the airplane or ride with the train, you know, close your eyes, you don't see where you're going through. And you still, yeah? you still are there. But all these outside images is constantly trigger, yeah? trigger the kilesas, the trigger the desires, yeah, are gone when we close our eyes. There's just this peacefulness, there's this contentment and happiness. Yeah? And we need to develop this. So, why are we still buying into? Yeah? Are we still believing it? Yeah? 
And it's the same thing, you know, it's not only the, the, the desire, oh, I, I, I need to sleep, now I need to do this, now I need to get up, <clears throat> now I need to drink something, now I need to pee something, yeah? I mean, that's actually not what we need, yeah? It's the kilesas, they need it, you know, they need just a change, they need just to bring us out of the samadhi, you know? Get to know it, yeah? Understand, you know, I'm in the power of sati. Huh? If you have sati, there is no kilesa. Huh? Understand that well. If there is sati, there is no kilesa. So just see the things as they are. Huh? And even if it is just for a moment. You see the things going on in the heart. You see the intentions constantly rising up. I mean, they are so fast, yeah? Because of all these sense inputs, yeah? They constantly come, the bombarding. It's, it's just like, you know, we're, we're a little meteor, you know, in, in the space, you know, and constantly everything is hitting us, yeah? At in, incredible speeds and incredible intervals, yeah? So short, yeah? And we are constantly only reacting. Yeah? Get, get to that, yeah? Get to that peacefulness, get to that safe house, where there is only sati. And then you're free of ego. For that moment, while you're in the safe house, there is no one taking hold of these experiences that you make. The moment you come out, somebody says, ah, that was great. I mean, that is already a thought, then you're already out, you know that. Yeah? Or even, you know, sometimes the thought, I mean, because you had a nice experience, yeah, the thought comes, I could stay there forever. That moment you think that thought, you're gone. You're out. You're out of samadhi. Yeah? Because you start to believe it, the moment you believe it, you're out. Yeah? Oh, I could stay there forever. And then your samadhi is finished. Yeah? And you don't even notice it. Because the calmness or the coolness of this place, you know, I mean, still holds on for a few moments. Yeah? <coughs> so what keeps you? You don't have enough dukkha here. Yeah. And go back in the world and, and, and find a job, you know, work, you know, until you realize why you came here in the first place. Huh? If you don't understand it anymore, yeah, then just go back and, 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 and go working. Yeah? Finding a place, you know, finding food to eat. Yeah. <clears throat> Isn't that too much dukkha? You constantly have to be, you constantly <clears throat> are occupied with your life. Yeah? What do I eat? You know, when do I go back home? You know, now I have to work. Yeah? Now I have to earn money. Now I don't have enough money. Now I can't afford this and so on and so on. <coughs> if you have no... <clears throat> No energy. If you have no motivation, I mean, then the best thing, you know, to gather your motivation is go back in this process again, yeah? Or find it otherwise, just like I said in the beginning, go back into your life or go forward in your life until you die. Yeah? <clears throat> why is it so difficult? Ask yourself the question, why is it so difficult, yeah? Why do I still believe it, yeah? Whatever the Kilisas tell me, you know, why do I still believe it? Yeah? They constantly lie to me, they constantly deceive me, but I still believe it. Yeah? Why? Yeah? Why do I give in to this thought? Yeah? Why can't I not, not cut them out? Yeah? Because that is the only thing in the beginning you know, that, that keeps us of this sati, it keeps us of this upachara samadhi. See what kind of thoughts are coming up, yeah? and how often do they come up? It's always, it's always running around. Even these thoughts are constantly running around like a, like a hamster in a hamster wheel. There are no new, more th- there are no new thoughts coming in. Huh? <clears throat> Even the thoughts, you know, also the thoughts, you know, some, sometimes, you know, sooner or later, you know, they will, <coughs> they will color themselves with in the form of dhamma. Yeah? Now. It's thought. Forget it. 
or I should practice like this, I should keep my attention like this, I should do it like this, I should change my practice. It's all the kilesas. Yeah? Don't fall into the trap. Yeah? Now I have to change my breath. Now I mean I, I, I focus on this. Now I have to sit more straight. It's all the kilesas. Yeah? Sit comfortable and all what you do is stick to your Buddha or stick to the breath. Yeah? That's the only thing that is required. That is sticking the hole. Yeah? And if you dig long enough, you will get the results. A hole will appear. Yeah? And the hole is called samadhi. Yeah? And the, the longer you dig, the deeper you dig, the deeper is the rest, the deeper is the peacefulness or the stillness. Yeah? And you know, I mean, if you dig a hole deep enough, you, don't, you won't see anything around you. Yeah? If you're only half in, you still see the world. Yeah? If you're completely in, you start, you know, the world gets only bits and bits and bit by bit, you know, it will disappear. Sati is the important thing, yeah? and you have to train it. Yeah? You have to train it, you know, by knowing. Yeah? Sati is knowingness, yeah? knowing how the breath is, knowing that there's intention, knowing that there's a sense input. That is the sati that we have to train. Knowing that the, the breath is going in, knowing that the breath is going out, knowing that the Buddha is at the beginning, knowing that the Buddha is at the end, yeah? knowing that there is a gap between the last Buddha and the next Buddha, knowing that there is a, there is a gap between the in-breath and the out-breath, knowing that the Buddha is fast or that the Buddha is <coughs> slow, that the Buddha is deep or the Buddha is sharp. Hmm? Or the breath, the same thing, yeah? knowing. Yeah? Is that, that is the track of the ox until we can hop onto this knowingness. Once we can hop onto this knowingness, we are in Upachara Samadhi. Yeah? And then we go on. Yeah? Until the mind becomes so subtle, until you really see everything that is going on in the chitta. Yeah? Every movement of the chitta you can see. Yeah? Until, that is, until the breath stops or until the Buddha is <clears throat> so so strong that you can't think it anymore. Your concentration becomes nearly 100%, yeah? and then you know you can't, because of this concentration, you can't think the Buddha. Yeah? Then you have to jump into this knowingness, yeah? into this pure knowingness, and that is called Apana Samadhi, once you jump in. It's the same thing, the breath really disappears, yeah? and don't, don't be afraid, yeah? just jump into that what knows that the breath disappears. It might be a struggle. I mean, you might sit for three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours until it really does it. Yeah? Or if you're interested in strong enough, I mean, you can only take half a second. Yeah? That it depends on <clears throat> depends on your interest in what is going on. Yeah? If you're more interested in what is happening than in, interested in the fear, how may they I die? Yeah. If you're more interested in the fear, you constantly have to start. Start again, yeah? They go from the beginning until you become to the fear, yeah? And then the fear stops you and then you start again, yeah, until the fear. Until you can overcome this fear and say, what the heck, you know, whatever happens, you know, whatever stays, you know, will stay and whatever can disappear, let it disappear so that I know what can disappear. Yeah? And when you, when you are at the stage, you know, and, and can let it go, then you will see this whole universe can disappear, yeah? Everything, yeah? This body disappears. I mean, when, when you get, <clears throat> when you observe the breath, or when you do the Buddha, and the, and, and the concentration becomes over 70 or 80 percent, yeah? I mean, the body starts to disappear. You can't feel it anymore. I mean, it, it becomes, yeah? more and more point-wise, you know, and the point, you know, is, is mostly then in the, in, the, in, the, in the end, you know, it will be just around the chitta, yeah? until that disappears as well, and there's nothing left, yeah? except for the pure knowingness that doesn't know object, yeah? it's a pure, clear knowingness, yeah? and you can't see, you can't say anything, anything about it, yeah? because it doesn't belong to this <coughs> This reality doesn't belong to this duality, and whatever is not dual, we cannot express. Yeah. All what you know is that you know, yeah? but you don't know this or you don't know that. You just know, and that can last. Yeah? 
You can last from, from one hour or you can last, you know, up to, to seven days. And then you come back into, into this reality, yeah? And then, then the same thing starts over again, yeah? You go back and then you come out and then you go back and you come out, yeah? So, you will realize that is not the end, yeah? I mean, that is just a nice escape, yeah? I mean, it's very nice, it's very peaceful, it's very restful, yeah? But that's not the escape. Because then, then you have to realize, ah, there was sila, samadhi, and panya. Ah, there's panya. So I have to develop wisdom. Yeah? How do I develop wisdom? By investigation. How do I investigate? By observing. So I do need the sati there. That's why it is so important. I need to focus on any object I want to investigate, be it a feeling. Uh, the first thing that we investigate, you know, why we, why we still are doing samadhi, why we still are doing samadhi is the feeling of pain. What is pain? Yeah? Let's investigate it. Yeah? So that we don't get in the future fooled by this feeling of pain. Pain is just pain. What is it? We have a whole concept, yeah, I mean a whole, I mean it is 700 page book, yeah, about what is pain. Yeah? But now let's go to the reality. Yeah? Once we know the reality, I mean we really cannot describe what is pain is, but we know what pain is, yeah. That's a difference. People who read all the 700 pages of the book that is called pain, know every aspect, you know, of the pain, but they don't know the reality. The reality you can't describe, yeah? but you know it. So when, when we gather this investigation, when we, when we develop wisdom, it's not that we develop knowledge, it is we develop through investigation, through understanding what is going on. How, what is pain? How does it feel like? Where does it come from? And so on. Is it in the bones, is it in the flesh, or is it in a mental feeling, is it a bodily feeling? And follow up the pain until you see where it is coming from. And then you understand what is pain. And then you can do the same thing with fear, or you can do the same thing with other feelings. What are they? Vedana is one of the one of the khandas, one of the groups that we have to investigate. And the other group, the main group, is the body. Investigate what is the body. It is born to die. Yeah? It will stay on just like everything. Yeah? It is the longest that stays on. And that's why it is more difficult to investigate. It takes a whole life, you know, to, to be able to investigate just this body, you know, that it is born and, and it will die. And then it goes through stages of aging and it goes through stages of sickness and so on. Mm? Feelings appear very quickly and disappear. Mm. Thoughts are very quickly appearing and very quickly disappearing. Memories are a little bit more sticky. Yeah? They are appearing, but they also relatively quickly disappear. All these khandas that we think it is us, you know, I mean, constantly are disappearing, appearing, reappearing, disappearing, reappearing, disappearing. So what is it that we call what we can call us, what is an entity that doesn't change. Yeah? The only thing in this universe that doesn't change is this knowingness. Is this, is, <clears throat> is this knowing, yeah? is the essence, yeah? this clear knowingness that we can experience in Apana Samadhi. That is the only thing that has never changed, that has never been born, it's not, it's not subject to change. I mean, if you want to call it, then you can call it your true self, but there is no self in it, because, I mean, it's just the essence. It's the essence of all being. No matter where the beings are, if they are in any form, animal form at the moment, or if they are devas, or if they are hungry ghosts, or if they are ghosts, or if they are hell beings. Yeah? The essence of all these beings is the same. So we investigate this body, yeah? I mean, inside, outside, outside, inside. We, we, we put it into bits and pieces to see, you know, what part of the body is the body, yeah? And put it back together, yeah? I mean, and leave it up to your imagination. Yeah? 
Why don't you sometimes put, you know, put the legs at, you know, at your shoulders and the and the arms at the <coughs> at the lower torso, yeah? and see, yeah? is that still a body? Yeah? Put it together as you wish, you know, and see, you know, what is the body? Yeah? Which of the part, you know, which of the parts of the body would you describe as a body? Yeah? Or go inside, you know, cut it open, you know, see what is inside, yeah? see what is underneath the skin. The skin is the big deceiver. Yeah? Open up the skin, you know, and look at it very clearly, very, uh, very objectively. Yeah? Look at it. Yeah? What is underneath the skin? Yeah? Is that what we like? Is that what we so much adore? Yeah? When we look in the mirror, is that what we see? No. All what we see is skin and hairs, yeah? nail and teeth. So what is the body? Yeah. What is the nature of the body? Yeah. Investigate it until you understand. Yeah. That's how we can get rid, that's how we can cut down the kilesis. If you understand, you know, what is pain, if you understand, you know, what is, what is restlessness, if you understand what is boredom, if you understand what is tiredness, yeah? I mean, we have to investigate this. Yeah? I mean, of course, you, you will say, or you might say, you know, I, of course I know what pain is. Pain is something this, and pain is this. Yeah? No, you have not understood it. Yeah? What is pain? What is fear? Yeah? What is restlessness? What is the difference between all these feelings? Yeah? See it, compare it. Yeah? How does it feel? Yeah? How does it feel when you are afraid? Yeah? How does it feel when you are in pain? How does it feel when you are angry? How does it feel when you are greedy? Investigate it, compare it, and see what they are. Yeah. Otherwise, you will never. You will always fall, the, fall for the tricks of the kilesas that, you know, I mean, they, they just paint it red and they paint it blue and they paint it this way and they paint it that way. Yeah. And you only go for the paint or you go for the diversity. Hmm? We don't go for the essence of it. Yeah, so what is the essence of the feeling of pain? What is the essence of the feeling of, of, of uh, fear or whatever, of greed, of, of hate? Yeah? You like it. Yeah? If you don't like it, why do you, why do you constantly put yourself into, into the situation where you get angry? Huh? Or when, where you get greedy? Yeah. Feel it before you go for it. You know, but you... <clears throat> that is where we need sati. I mean, we, we need to see that anger is coming up, and then we, have, then we can look at it, you know, what is anger? But no, we, we don't do that, you know, we constantly follow our anger, we follow our grief, we follow this, we follow every kind of you know, sense input, yeah? without asking, yeah? just, like a, just like a robot. Yeah? I mean, he gets a sense input and he knows how to react, you know, and that's what he does become human being, you know, decide for yourself not to follow, yeah? and to investigate. And especially find your own motivation. Yeah? If you don't have any motivation, then, then just imagine now going back into the work that you left, yeah? Going back into this working life like every, every human being, you know, that around us. More or less, he is working. Yeah? He has to work for his living. Yeah? We don't. Here in this monastery, we don't have to work for our living, but we have to work, you know, to get rid of the kilesas. That's the requirement if you want to live in a monastery like this. Yeah? The requirement for this is we have to work yeah, that we get yeah, our living, but this kind of work is a spiritual work. Yeah? To develop sati, to develop pani. That's the work that we have to do. So remember that, get your motivation and start really practicing. I mean, already the first week of, of the Pansa, of the Rains Retreat has passed. Yeah? And what did you do? Dilly dallying around. Yeah? That's what you do. Ah, okay, tomorrow I start working. No, no, no. Ah, to, 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 it's not so comfortable. Ah, let's see, maybe tomorrow is my, my concentration is better. That is dilly dallying and you will not, you can do that to the end of your life and you haven't changed anything. Yeah? You're still around in the hamster wheel, you're still in this roller coaster yeah? of life or whatever you call it. 
or samsara like the Lord Buddha mentioned. Yeah? So get your act together and, and, and start practicing. Yeah? With this I end the talk. Yeah? <clears throat> That's all. Don't want to pay respect, huh? Krab. Krab, krab. If you say krab, then say krab pom. Yeah? That means yes. Benny, hast du verstanden? 